buckle up, because Metro is bringing you the best deal in wireless. Switch to Metro and get your choice of two awesome free phones from top brands like Samsung and LG with huge HD screens and tons of memory for all your pics and videos. So hurry into Metro and get your awesome free phones only at Metro. Plus sales tax and activation fee. Requires port and of eligible number not currently active on T-Mobile Network or active on Metro in past 90 days. Limit four per account or household. Restrictions apply. See store for details and terms and conditions. The Tulane Executive MBA program provided me with a perfect combination of soft skills and the confidence necessary to run my biotech company. My name is Trivia Frazier. I'm the president and CEO of Obatala Sciences Incorporated. Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com. And by Shorten Associates, legal recruiters in Louisiana and Texas. And by Orange Theory Fitness, delivering fitness results for a healthier world. From Commander's Palace Restaurant in the Garden District in New Orleans, we're out to lunch with Peter Raschuti. Peter Raschuti is Tulane University's A.B. Freeman School of Business professor and director of the award-winning Birkenrode Reports. It's business, New Orleans style. Hi, I'm Peter Raschuti. Welcome to Out to Lunch. Apparently, we all used to be a lot more fatalistic. We smoked cigarettes and thought it was cool, and we raised a few generations on ding-dongs, Coca-Cola, and fast food before we realized what smoke, sugar, and carbs were doing to our bodies. Thankfully today, we are living in an era where we know about preventative care. We take for granted that by taking care of ourselves with exercise, diet, and stress relief, we can be healthier, happier, and live longer. Central to this pursuit is the human heart. It's the business of caring for the literal human heart that we're talking about today. Dr. Owen McGabgab is an interventional cardiologist at the Cardiovascular Institute of the South. CIS, as they're known, started out in 1983 as a one physician practice in Homa. Today, CIS has 19 locations across Louisiana and a bunch more places where you can access their expertise remotely via what's called telecardiology. Dr. Owen McGabgab, welcome to Out to Lunch. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Heart health is also the goal of one of the fastest growing franchise businesses in the country, Orange Theory Fitness. Orange Theory Fitness is a workout program built around the principle that if you get your heart working at a set rate for a set amount of time, which they call the orange zone, the benefits of that exercise will continue well past that hour you spent in the gym. When you're in an Orange Theory Fitness class, you know exactly when your heart is in that orange zone because you're wired up to a heart monitor and you can see your fitness results as you exercise. We're pleased to have Orange Theory Fitness as a sponsor of Out to Lunch and they've been a sponsor for some years and today we're happy to welcome the Louisiana area representative and owner of Orange Theory Fitness, Elle Mahoney. Elle, welcome to Out to Lunch. Hi, Peter. Glad to be back. Owen, I know it's kind of... uh, antithetical to talk about heart health in terms of hamburgers, but bear with me here for a moment. McDonald's and Burger King are fairly identical. They have the same business model and they both make the same type of food, but there are people who prefer one over the other and they'll tell you why. It's the burger, it's the fries, it's the shake and so on. Whatever it is they like about Burger King, they know it's going to be reliably the same every time they go to any one of the company's outlets. When you grow a business like Cardiovascular Institute of the South and you open multiple locations, can you replicate that reliable heart care the way Burger King can replicate hamburgers? What I'm asking is, with a business that's as personal and vital as a relationship with a doctor, how do you standardize the procedure so that you get the same care at every CIS clinic? Well, we found a formula that works. We have a a lot of our clinics run in the same way, and there's sort of a CIS method to patient care. So it starts with one of the things is you call a CIS clinic and you always get a person on the phone. You don't hit a menu with seven different options. So we try to um, make it easier for patients to call in and get easy access to care. Um, And then we have a lot of quality metrics with blood pressure and cholesterol and uh, targets that we try to hit from one location to the other. And we just have a, have a method of, of providing good health care. Uh, the other thing we do is uh, doctors are allowed to just be doctors. 
So a lot of the staff is exceptionally well trained at taking care of a lot of the non-doctor related stuff you get yourself caught up to in, in modern healthcare. So um, you're allowed to really focus on taking care of your patients. But it's kind of funny in a way. I mean, your your doctoring is all being a doctor, but you're also a a business person because you uh, these are physician home owned facilities, right? It is. So uh, CIS is an independent physician-owned uh, uh, practice, and, and patient care is at the absolute heart of, of everything we do. But we are, we are a little bit unique. It's not all we do. Um, so we, have, we also manage uh, cath labs um, for hospitals around the state. So um, cath labs are these uh, minimally invasive, kind of like operating room areas, um, and they can be very wasteful and ineffective and not great places for patient care. But just like we have in our clinics, uh, we have a formula for making efficient, well-run, patient-centered cath labs. Um, So we often work with hospitals to sort of optimize their care, reduce waste, um, and it makes for better patient outcomes and and better bottom line for the hospitals. L, as I mentioned, Orange Theory Fitness is one of the fastest-growing franchises in the country. It's in the same league as Taco Bell and ahead of Jack in the Box and Planet Fitness and Sonic, that's factual information. What is less factual, but might in some way be explanatory, is the anecdotal evidence of people who belong to Orange Theory Fitness. When these people talk about their workout at Orange Theory, and I've met many of them, they seem to have almost a religious-like zeal. Uh, What I'm wondering is, how much does this personal enthusiasm account for the nationwide success of the business? Is it simply this enthusiasm that creates word-of-mouth referrals, which is fueling the massive growth of Orange Theory Fitness, or is it not just part of it, and there's also some slick uh, central marketing uh, coming from the head office? I think it's really based on the fact that we have a world-class program that delivers results, and our members respond to it. And they're enthusiastic about achieving these results in an environment with a bunch of other people who are doing the same thing. And so it's a lifestyle, and they're connecting with other people who value a lifestyle that has heart health as part of it, overall health, and it's fun. Um, And it's fun to communicate with other people that are like-minded. And I think community is something that we we really drive um, a lot of focus on, is creating. Working out by yourself doesn't give you the same feel. Some people like it. Some people are really just kind of individual contributors. Hell, were you, um, what got you started? Were you just a, a, were you like a client at first? Did you? I was. Okay. Yeah. I joined um, Orange Theory, the very first studio that they opened in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where I'm from, and um, six months after they opened. And after about three years, I got wind that they were going to uh, really drive the franchise model. And it occurred to me maybe I should get involved. And I had been, you know, a corporate employee of Siemens and IBM for 20 years. and Heard of both of those. Yeah, <laughs> and I just decided that it was time to step away and try something completely different, and so I cashed in my 401k and threw in behind it. When you first thought about it, I mean, you heard there was the opportunity, but what was the first step? Did you talk to other franchise owners? Would that be one of the things you'd suggest for people? Well, I went around and visited as many Orange Theories as I could. So I flew to Minnesota. We're one of the very earliest uh, groups. Um, the, the owners knew each other from owning European Wax and Massage Envy. So they had been franchise owners of that and, and sort of said, well, we're going to start this Orange Theory fitness idea. Do you want to jump in? So those owners are the ones that I went around to visit are these Massage Envy owners. So yes, they were other franchise owners and started talking with us about the financial modeling and what we could expect, uh, budgeting. They were very open about sharing what their costs were and uh, the pitfalls. And, um, and so I, over time, became more and more convinced that this is something I could do. I had been in sales. And so, I mean, we're all in sales. Isn't some of us has realized yeah. it, and <laughs> some of them are about to. <laughs> so, yes, I did do a little checking around like that. Um, 
but and I also worked out at them and they were as similar as they could be we've gotten a lot better at that I think people want a consistency of experience where they kind of know what to expect and now that there's 1,250 open in the United States. It, it's more meaningful that when you're a member of one, you're a member of all. Cardiology seems kind of confusing to most people. Like I remember going to a, a heart doctor and him immediately telling me I'm in the wrong place. I needed uh, a plumber and he was an electrician, I, I, which I thought was <laughs> this kind of, lot. this Home Depot explanation was just at my level. And uh, where do you fit in in all that? Well, cardiology's gotten very segregated into into niches and what it comes from is that the more you do of one particular thing the better you get at it right if you're a cardiologist that does a little bit of everything you never really master any one thing and um, that's that's been a big part of all medicine lately uh, my niche is I, I take care of people who have uh, very complex heart blockages so if you have a simple blockage you typically get uh, stents right would Easy. That be we can plumbing. It, Would that be? It is a plumbing. Okay, right. It is a plumbing issue. That's correct. Um, but we can do that now easily, like through the wrist artery. It's it's an in and out type of thing a lot of times. And if you have complex blockages, uh, the standard of care is still to get bypass surgery, open heart surgery. Um, but not everyone can get open heart surgery for various reasons. Either they've had it before, um, and the grafts went down, or they have a weak heart muscle and they they can't go through that. Age plays into it. And traditionally, if you couldn't get stents or heart surgery, you were just kind of, you know, left with to suffer. Um, so we brought, uh, one of the guys that trained me, they brought a lot of these advanced techniques from Japan of getting, using stents and balloons and catheters and getting these complex blockages open. They're called coronary chronic total occlusions. Um, and it's for people who can't get bypass um, a lot of times. And so I actually travel around the state to different CIS sites and, do them at those places as well as the uh, uh, hospitals here in town. Um, but it, that's my one niche of the universe. Now, Al, did you look at, um, in addition to talking to franchise owners, um, did you look at other franchise opportunities, uh, other kinds of companies? And or was this kind of, no. just fell in love with this? Yeah, this yeah. is what I wanted to do. I was very focused on, um, on exercise myself, and I was interested in the science of it. And so I talked to different scientists, doctors. I come from a family of physicians. And so we discussed a lot about the efficacy of the workout. Is it really good or is it just another fad? Um, and concluded that this really had the elements to sustain um, itself through time as long as we could get the other softer art pieces together. Well, let's talk about those soft art pieces for a sec. You, you open up a, a spot. Um, how much money is involved in that and opening up a new store? We budget a half a million dollars for each studio to open it. And then you've got to either build it or remodel it, and then you've got to build a client base. and, um, and Hire then, people. Yep, yeah, hire people, which is a problem all into Tricky. itself. Yes, mm -hmm. they, uh, it's, uh, and then, um, then since you, do you control all of Louisiana? Yes. Wow, that is, uh, first of all, that is fascinating because uh, uh, do you feel forced to expand at a decent pace? Because yes. you do. All right. Yes. Well, for two reasons. One is that you know that there's so many people that are looking for an orange theory, and we get calls all the time um, that they're keen on or an orange theory in their little area. Um, but also because we want to close out the competition because there's copycats and they see what we're, there, what we're doing and they want to do it and so if we don't grab the, the best spot in the next location, they, they might. And so really it's um, a theory. defensive, a right, a defensive aggression. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good term for it. To, uh, to open as quickly as possible. Uh, if somebody says, I really would like one here in Alexandria, Louisiana, what what are the decisions you've got to make? I mean, are you looking at demographics or what, what do you? Exactly. Kind of, okay. Yeah, we're looking at demographics. We know that people want it, but we also have to conclude that if we're going to spend what it's going to take to open one, we have to be certain that there is enough of our sweet spot of demographics, which 10 years in, we're pretty clear on what, what that, that sweet is? spot is. 
Um, it's, it's young professionals who are, um, I mean, most of them are single, but a lot of them have young families, and so there has to be enough uh, leftover income in order to sustain an Orange Theory membership, which uh, isn't in the order of a Planet Fitness or an Anytime or a Snap. You pay for what you get, and when you get personal training and a world-class program, it's a little bit more expensive. So we have to make sure that there is the, um, the jobs infrastructure to support that demographic to select something like Orange Theory. Um, and it's also distance, you know, from where we are. Now your folks were physicians, and um, what about you, Owen? Were your folks physicians? No, my dad was in the oil field. He was an engineer. He thought this was a terrible idea, but uh, <laughs> uh, but, it, but it's funny. It's funny you talk about demographics. I mean, we look at uh, we look at similar things, but we're looking at the opposite. I of the was spectrum, just thinking right? about that. So, we're looking uh, for people that well, probably need help. Well, one thing is Louisiana is not a beacon of heart health, so you have oh, a lot yeah. of stop a lot presses. of work to do. That's going to be. Um, you know, we're we work on some of the sicker ends, so we still have really high smoking rates in Louisiana. We're always in the top three in the nation. Um, we have high diabetes rates. Um, one of the things that we look for, we do a lot of uh, limb salvage procedures to prevent amputations for people with poor circulation. Um, and there's a lot of amputations that go on in Louisiana, so some of the sickest of the sick patients are here. Um, and we have a long way to go. Um, long way to go in Orange Theories. We're doing uh, our part. You're doing your yeah. part. It's awesome. The, uh, um, actually, it absolutely you're, is. you're against each other, right? This That's, is uh, so great. She does no, so no, terrific. No, not, not at all. all. No, 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 no. Okay, all right. Believe we work me. together. There's, there's, <laughs> no, there's, uh, we, everybody does better when people live healthier, longer lives. It's not, now, not for, that at all. For you, though, Owen, you came, um, you were born here, went away, and so... You could say the two reasons you came back is one to come home, but the other is that it's a pretty terrific market, I guess. Well, what it is, the, the niche procedure that I do, there actually wasn't anyone in the New Orleans area doing it um, when I finished fellowship, which was uh, a nice uh, draw. But I did. I grew up in the Mandeville-Covington area, and uh, I love the outdoors, and there's no place better than Louisiana for that. So, <laughs> um, But I do. I, like, I love this region, and I do think we do need better heart health here. I think we can... Uh, have ways to improve, and, and CIS has models for that, right? When they came to Homa, Terrebonne Parish had some of the highest cardiovascular mortality rates in the country, and they've managed to turn that around. And it's 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 not all about doing advanced procedures. It's mostly getting people active, stopping smoking, get your diabetes under control, blood pressure, those kind of things. Because if you look, cardiovascular mortality rates since the 70s have been plummeting. Right, and that's people, and it's not. I ask patients that sometimes, like, why do you think that is? And it's all everyone's answer is almost always, oh, because we eat so much better now. They're like, no, we don't. So we don't <laughs> eat better now. That I think people are heavier than they have ever been. Um, but the bottom line is, blood pressure medicines are better. The cholesterol medicines work. People stop smoking. Smoking rates have declined, and that's that's the key to a, a healthy um, community. Um, and, and obviously exercise, too. You're listening to Out to Lunch. I'm Peter Raschuti. I'm talking with Dr. Owen McGabgab, who is an interventional cardiologist from the Cardiovascular Institute of the South and El Mahoney, Louisiana area representative and owner of Orange Theory Fitness. We'll be right back after this very brief break. Combining home and auto with State Farm gets you great coverage for less. Combining 90s R&B with State Farm radio ads gets you this jam covered for free. For more coverage, visit statefarm.com. At Metro, the best deal in wireless is on. Switch to Metro and get one full Amazon Prime membership included every month. Plus, get two free phones from top brands like Samsung and LG with huge HD screens. All with two lines for just 90 bucks. That's the best deal in wireless, only at Metro. Plus sales tax and activation fee. Requires port and of eligible number not currently active on T-Mobile Network or active on Metro in past 90 days. Limit four per account or household. Offer subject to change. Offer valid for new Amazon Prime members. Amazon Prime has a $12.99 per month value. Restrictions apply. See store for details and terms and conditions. 
You're listening to Out to Lunch. I'm Peter Raschuti. I'm talking with interventional cardiologist Owen McGabgab from the Cardiovascular Institute of the South and El Mahoney, a Louisiana area representative and owner of Orange Theory Fitness. Owen and El, you're both in businesses that are all about human interaction. You spend a lot of your day talking to people and you also have a good number of people who work with you. Picking the right person to work with can be a tough task. You only have a limited amount of conversation to decide if this person is going to be a good fit for your company. And lately there's been an interesting trend in the workplace interview. It consists of asking the other person questions that go beyond a resume. Uh, I have a list of 16 of these probing interview questions in front of me, and I'm gonna ask you each to pick a number between one and 16. I'll ask you the question, and then I want you to tell me how you'd answer it. Who, who wants to go first? Oh, I'll go. All right. All right. You're a brave soul. There's, uh, let's see. All right. What number do you want? Uh, the last one. Last one. That would be 16. All right. Oh, it was put, put last for a reason. Um, here we go. What's the one thing that people say that you hate more than anything else and why? I'm too old to exercise. Oh. Yeah. That's the thing that, uh, it just perplexes me because I think, Knowing modern medicine, they're going to keep us alive for long, many, many decades. And the choice is if you're going to live those decades in a quality of life or not. Are you going to suffer and just be alive in your wheelchair with your one leg or, you know, whatever's Watching left? Watching Jeopardy by yourself from, on the couch, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they want to quit. They're saying at 50 they're too old to do this. And just because they're deconditioned doesn't mean we can't recondition. Okay, somebody comes in, they're 55 years old, haven't worked out in maybe 20 years. How do you convince them and what do you get them started with? Well, because everybody wears a heart rate monitor during our workout, we that gives us insight into what their activity level should be as they're actually working out. And they get feedback as well does our coach. So our coach is able to look there and see if they're overtraining. So there's a somewhat of a control there, both from what the individual can see as well as their certified coach, who is protecting them and themselves, the, the coach, um, so that they don't overtrain or undertrain and thereby don't get results. Um, and it's really talking with them will buddy up. I will work out with anybody. I'm 64 and I do the workout every other day. I'll work out next to someone. Just work to out with the owner, that is so cool. Absolutely, I'm totally happy to do that. And my managers feel the same way as you know any of our front desk staff or the coaches. We really want to encourage people to do it because we know it's the right thing for them. As long as their doctor clears them, if they've had, you know. Where would we find a doctor? Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, oh, and what, uh, I'm going to give you that same situation, numbers 1 through 16. Which one do you want? Uh, how about 11? 11. All right, 11. Well, this is kind of wild for a physician. Uh, 11. Tell me about the worst boss you've ever had. Oh, wow. That's uh, so. When you go, so when you go through a lot of medical training, um, you you have a lot of bad bosses. It's uh, <laughs> now so, these are fellow doctors. Well, no, there used to be. It's not as much anymore. But when you go through medical training now when you're a trainee you're treated pretty well right but it wasn't always that way right your attending physician or the senior physician would often treat the junior residents and fellows um, very very poorly um, so you know there weren't work hour restrictions and all these things you'd be up for days at a time and things like that none of that happens anymore but um, no I, I can I, we've had some bad ones I remember one time I was on a, a neurosurgery rotation and uh, you know, you uh, neurosurgery, people don't realize this, but you operate with these little suckers a lot, right? And um, I remember it was like 2 in the morning, and they brought the attending neurosurgeon, we handed him the wrong suckers, and he starts bending them and throwing them around the room at all the, cath lab, at all the, the staff of the operating room. But
but you, you'd be amazed at how uh, how different that is now that that kind of stuff doesn't happen anymore. But uh, sound like it was fraternity hazing or something. There, you oh, there's there. absolutely the the people that you went through your internship with are like your fraternity brothers. I mean, it's uh, you were you were no doubt you were being hazed. There's uh, no doubt about that. <laughs> well, let me ask you, after the L, if you were interviewing somebody and they gave you the response that you gave me, what would you be thinking? <clears throat> Like you mentioned, the kind of the, the thing you hate to hear. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be thrilled, really. If you mean if they yeah. asked me, if they yeah, if they responded like you did, would that be somebody you'd like to hire? Absolutely, because it they're optimistic that anybody can change their life through exercise, in addition with other elements of of a healthy lifestyle. But if they believe that someone that is their mother's age, 50 or 55, can't work out, then they're never going to encourage someone who walks in that looks like their mom, who hasn't worked out for 20 or 25 years. And science shows us that it, well into your 90s, you can gain muscle mass. So Muscles kind of protect attitude. our bones. You know, we need muscle. It's not about the habitus, the, the shape of the body looking thin. It's about the heart being healthy. If the heart is healthy, you have a fighting chance for every other system in the body to be healthy. So you're hearing, uh, in that response, you're hearing kind of a positive yes. message. And, uh, right. And Dr. McGabgab, uh, your response, and first of all, you picked a very difficult question. Um, what do you think you'd like to hear? I mean, that's a very tough one because you have to respond with something, and yet you don't want to seem like a guy that always hates bosses. No. So uh, <laughs> you definitely don't want to point out one particular one who yeah. might be listening, right? <laughs> no, that's very true. Mm -hmm. um, but but uh, the, the educational part of medicine has changed a lot. Um, it's no longer what it was where, the, um, where they, you know, belittled the trainees and stuff like that. Um, and physician education continues on. Now it's a lot more cordial. There's great meetings. We host a bunch of them around the country. Um, sort of educating physicians because it doesn't stop with residency and fellowship, right? It goes on all throughout your career. Um, our field in particular, it changes so fast. So the things that were done 10, 20 years ago have been completely turned on their head. So you have to stay current. You have to always keep up with uh, um, postgraduate and physician training. And, and uh, we are big proponents of that. And you had a, uh, an academic research kind of background at one point in, you know, to become a business person with, uh, you know, these multiple facilities and all that. Did you go get an MBA? What did you do? Because this is a very different world. <laughs> no, the, the way CIS works, we have, uh, we have an incredible um, management staff. We have a, a CEO and COO um, that operate a lot of that. So, you know, in a regular physician practice, you as the physician have to worry about hiring the nursing staff and the clinic staff and stuff like that. Um, but we have very experienced nurses and clinic staff who hire the new office staff. Um, it's really on autopilot and has run extremely well, so we can focus on being doctors and not having to fight through a lot of that. And so your ownership is just kind of a financial thing more than, you know, running the whole program. That's correct. Um, it is a physician-owned practice, but um, we don't work as much with the day-to-day -day operations. We have um, individuals who uh, run a lot of that uh, HR stuff and, and take care of a lot of that. There are quite a few parts of the human body that we can do without. You can get by with one leg, one kidney, even one lung, but you've only got one heart, at, at least at this stage of human development. You can't live without it, so you need to take care of it. Owen and L, if you have to go to work every day, you couldn't be doing anything much more valuable for the human race than working on heart health. Thank you for everything you do, and thank you both for taking the time to join me for Out to Lunch today. Thank, thank you so for much. having us. My guests in Out to Lunch today have been Dr. Owen McGabgab, interventional cardiologist at the Cardiovascular Institute of the South, and El Mahoney, Louisiana area representative and owner of Orange Theory Fitness. You can find out more about the Cardiovascular Institute of the South and Orange Theory Fitness by following the links on our website, itsneworleans.com. Their producer of our show is Grant Morris, our technical producer is Eric Merle, and our researcher is Maggie Mendel. 
You can listen to the show and to past episodes of Out to Lunch wherever you get podcasts, including Spotify. And you can find all of our podcasts at itsneworleans.com. If you want to know what we look like, you can find photos from this show on itsneworleans.com, It's New Orleans Facebook page, and on Instagram. These photos were taken today by Jill LaFleur. You can find more of Jill's photos at LaFleurphoto.com. Out to Lunch is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com and WWNO 89.9 FM. I'm Peter Raschuti. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to meeting you again next week around the table here at Commander's Palace for more business New Orleans style on Out to Lunch. Out to Lunch is recorded live over lunch at Commander's Palace in New Orleans. Commander's Palace serves lunch Monday to Friday, jazz brunch on Saturday and Sunday with live music, and dinner seven nights a week. Mitchell Foreman wrote and performs all the music on Out to Lunch. You can hear Mitchell's music anywhere great jazz is sold or streamed and at MitchellForeman.com. Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com. And by Shorten Associates, legal recruiters in Louisiana and Texas. And by Basics Swim and Gym and Basics Underneath Fine Lingerie, the It's New Orleans Happy Hour podcast. And by Orange Theory Fitness, delivering fitness results for a healthier world. Texting enrolls you into reoccurring automated text messages. Message and data rates may apply. Come on, one more rep. You got this. Uh, Ten. There it is. Nice work, man. You're a beast. <sighs> Thanks, man. I feel better than I have in years. And I got to tell you, taking Nugenix makes a huge difference for me. Nugenix? That's the uh, testosterone booster with TV ads with Frank Thomas. The big hurt, right? Oh, yeah. This is a legit product. The key ingredient is testophen, which helps boost free testosterone levels and increase lean muscle mass. Well, it's clearly working for you. Hey, are they still giving out complimentary bottles? for people to try for themselves? Yeah, Nugenix is a great way to increase lean muscle and feel stronger with more energy and endurance. Man, I need to get a complimentary bottle of Nugenix. No problem. You just got to send them a text. Text BODY to 42424 right now for your complimentary bottle of Nugenix, the number one selling free testosterone booster at GNC. Nugenix samples are not available in stores, so text BODY to 42424 right now. Text BODY to 42424. That's BODY to 42424. Four.